I grew up with Goosebumps. Um, watched them ever since I was a kid. I've done seen the show at least a hundred times. And the books, I've never read any of them except for like very few. Before Goosebumps would become the second best selling book series in history with over 350 million books sold worldwide in 32 languages. Before Goosebumps would bring us such classic characters as the Haunted Mask, the Lawn Gnomes, the Body Squeezers, and Slappy the Dummy. Don't you get it? I'm invincible! <laughs> Before Goosebumps would be turned into a popular 90s television series filmed here in Toronto. Before Goosebumps would be made into the 2015 feature film and just recently Goosebumps Haunted Town would become available on iOS and Android. The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena? These are all Goosebumps manuscripts. Why are these books locked? Did you unlock a book? Oh no. Now there's nothing more nostalgic for me than good old Goosebump books. I remember the way they smelled, the way they made me wet the bed, and I would spend hours trying to trace the cover art. I also remember trying to audition to get on the TV show and questioning if R.L. Stein was a real life monster. Now for those of you who don't know these literal classics, well Goosebumps were the creepy pastas of my generation. Now readers they got to discover the horror genre without the gore, the sex or the foul language presented in feature films. The whole Goosebumps franchise is built in a way for young adults and children to experience suspense and fear in a safe way. That's why I love them, and that's why I teamed up with them for this video. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Michael McCrudden trying something a little different here. We're talking about Goosebumps here for you on Before They're Famous. And a huge thanks goes to Goosebumps for sponsoring this video. Now, they have a brand new game out available for iOS and Android. You gotta check it out. As a kid, I read the books every night before bed, but now with the game, it's like my nightmares are coming to life, and it's awesome. I can control all my favorite characters Slappy the Dummy, Killer Clowns, Mummies, they're all here. I can scare whoever I want whenever I want. I can unleash any monster anytime, anywhere. Chasing people around as Slappy the Dummy? Yeah, sign me up. You get your very own town to control and your own people. Every level is scarier than the next. Now we've been playing this game around the office and everyone is absolutely obsessed. It's really fun. That's also why we missed three days of uploads because we were all playing the game. Now there is a link to it down below. Be sure to check that out. All right, now let's get into this Goosebumps before they're famous. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. The first issue of Goosebumps was released in July of 1992, making Goosebumps a Gemini. But the story of the book series doesn't start here. We need to talk about its creepy creator, R.L. Stein. Robert Lawrence Stein was born on October 8, 1943 in Columbus, Ohio and grew up in small town Bexley, Ohio, population just 13K. His mother was a homemaker and his father a shipping clerk in a warehouse. Now the Steins are Jewish if you hadn't guessed and Robert grew up with a younger sister and a younger brother. When he was 9 years old he found a typewriter in his attic and he began writing from that day on. Describing his own childhood he told the Washington Post, I was a very shy kid, very fearful of a lot of things which is bad when you're a kid but now it's very helpful. I can remember that feeling of panic and try to convey that in the books. When I was 9 or 10 I just started staying in my room and typing these stories. His mother would beg him to go outside and play but Rob always said it was too boring outside. In school Rob was not a great student, he was making jokes and interrupting the class and believe it or not he got mostly B's on his report card. He would also spend most of his days doodling pictures. Now his initial plan was to get into comics but not as a writer, he wanted to be an illustrator. Eventually he accepted that he was much better writer than an artist. Pressing forward he attended Ohio State University obtaining a degree in English but he skipped class on the regular in favor of his job as editor for the school newspaper. Following school RL moved to the Big Apple and found work at Scholastic working mainly in kids humor magazines. It wasn't until 1986 that he wrote his first horror titled Blind Date. Hey everybody, I'm Roger Lodge and welcome once again to the party known as Blind Date. Now I haven't read the book but I doubt it's as scary as that clip. He wrote several similar novels soon after including Beach House, The Babysitter and Hidden Run. 
Then in 1989, he created Fear Street, a series set in the quaint town of Shady Side, Ohio, where murders and supernatural happenings occurred regularly. Fear Street became an instant success and national bestseller. In fact, it was the best-selling young adult series in history. Now, following this success, RL, he took a small detour working in television as the head writer for a show called Eureka's Castle. You remember this? You, oh, you, you, me, you, me, you see who? He then decided to return to what he was best at and teamed up with his wife Jane, who ran her own publishing company, Parachute Press. Together, they got to work developing a series known as Goosebumps. Now, the idea was greenlit by publisher Scholastic, and RL Stein had to go ahead to release six books. The first being Welcome to Dead House. <clears throat> but anyway, we got book number one, Welcome to Dead House. And more would soon follow. We got Monster Blood, which was a really good one. I loved that one, and I loved the Stay Out of the Basement one. Say Cheese and Die. Really good. Others from the initial six were Stay Out of the Basement, The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, and Let's Get Invisible. Earl Stein has revealed that his strategy is to come up with the title first and then work from there. It takes him on average three weeks to flesh out the entire concept for each book. Now there are a few rules that Earl Stein follows, and that includes that no one ever dies in his books. Also there's always one boy and one girl character. Inspiration from his stories would not only come from his own childhood and what scared him when he was a kid, but also situations that are happening in his life. One Halloween, his son got stuck in a Frankenstein mask, which resulted in him creating the popular series, The Haunted Mask. What's this? My mask, it won't come off. Stop kidding around, Carly Bat. I'm not kidding around. Really, I... Based on the series immediate success, the initial six would grow to an order of 62, and then spin off series would be created, including tales to give you goosebumps, give yourself goosebumps, and my personal favorite, the choose your own adventure, which were titled Goosebump Adventureland. Now, all of a sudden, R.L. Stein had a whole generation acting like he did as a child, staying in and reading rather than going out and playing. Now, Goosebumps would quickly develop into a television show filmed here in Toronto with four seasons and 74 episodes released. Although the intro was a little cheesy, the show, it was a huge success. Don't you know anything about gnomes? It's what we do in our nature. We make mischief. Anywhere, anytime, and to anyone. Alright, the whole thing was cheesy, but some serious talent actually appeared on that show. I'm talking Ryan Gosling, Adam West, Kevin Zeggers, Army Hammer, and Hayden Christensen. It quickly became the number one kids show in America for three years in a row, and if you're looking for a trip down memory lane, well you can now find them on Netflix. Then in 2015, the Goosebumps movie starring Jack Black, well it was released featuring 40 monsters from the Goosebumps books. This of course included Slappy, and if you stayed this long into the video, well you must be a super fan of the Goosebumps books and the franchise, so you should definitely download the game. There is a link down below, I'm serious, it's really fun. Now it's not often we make videos like this, but we have documented corporations in the past. We've done videos on McDonald's and Lego. We've also talked about the death of Vine and the success of YouTube. So you know, we like to get creative and try different things. We also have a new channel titled Before They Are Fiction with recent videos being on Chewbacca and Venom. And those videos are right here. You can click on them right now. As for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is Before They Are Famous. My name is Michael McCrudden. I'll see you guys in another video.